This is a chance. The Spartans, with a lot of their fans coming from nearby Michigan and Southwest Missouri State, also represented as we look around this crowd and hear the noise in support of the Bears. And today's officials, Larry Limbo, James Howell, and Stanley Roach. will defend to our right and Michigan State to our left. Southwest control. Jackie Crawford and Johnny Murdoch in the backcourt. That's Crawford, a junior from Chicago, just 5'7", a transfer from Indian Hills Junior College in Iowa, averaging 11-9 a game. They'll be patient on offense. They're not overexcited to get the quick shot. They'll be smart, look for screens, look to get Murdoch open for a jumper. And in the middle is number 42, Clint Thomas, a freshman from Little Rock. Rigsby off the iron. Good rebound by Thomas. Back outside. Murdoch lets fly, and Southwest opens the scoring. Michigan State will push it when they have it. If not, they'll look to run screens inside and try to get the ball inside for foul trouble against Southwest Missouri and get on the offensive boards. Stegen guy. Exactly what we talked about. Offensive rebound on the missed shot. This is where State's going to be strong. Offensive rebound. for Rigsby. Stevens by himself. And he has it. 4 nothing state lead. Great rebound pass from Stegnagna down the floor. Stevens moves very well filling the lanes. And this is something that we look at Michigan State to do. They will run, but when they're not going to run, they'll be smart at half court. Man-to-man -man defense by Michigan State. Turner and Rigsby up front. Lester Turner, a 6'1 junior from Las Vegas. He's number 30. Murdoch in the corner. Won't go for Crawford. Spartans rebound. Stegenga couldn't handle the pass. Gets it back again. Good effort. One of the things they talked about yesterday at Southwest Michigan State was going to run the fast break, but Southwest Missouri was going to try to get three guards back to stop the transition. So far, they haven't done that, and this is why they have the big lead. Big speed. Good outside shooter. Southwest Missouri's not doing a good job of screening. They're moving, but without a purpose, and this is why they're not getting good shots right now. He misses. Stevens rebounding. Montgomery quickly down court. And Resper trying to drive. Takes an offensive foul. Well, I think Charlie Spoonar has got to make a decision about this rebounding. It's obvious they're not getting any offensive rebounding. And this is where I think Tony Graves can become a factor. I don't know how long you can go without him. But with this score at 6-0, in the way Michigan State's controlling both boards, they've got to make that decision pretty soon. Rodney Perry comes into the game. So, in effect, they're going with three guards, although Perry is a guard forward. Let's see what Charlie Spoonauer has in mind as he sits Lester Turner down. 16.45 to go, a 6 nothing Spartan lead. See, when you got two 6-6 forwards trying to rebound against Michigan State's size, that's a problem for Southwest Missouri. On the corner, Rigsby. Rigsby's got to have a good game shooting, and Murdoch's got to have a good game shooting. I think if Crawford just is more patient with his penetration, he'll have better offense. Tony Graves is up and ready to come in for the Bears. Foul called outside. 
Well, this right now, with Tony Graves coming into the game, number 40, this is the bulk I like. This is the guy that can make things happen inside. He's very aggressive. He's got good offensive post moves. And watch for him to become a factor on the boards as well as inside scoring for Southwest Missouri State. Ken Thomas picking up the foul for Southwest Missouri State. The Missouri Valley Tournament Champions. 23 and 7 mark coming into this game. Springfield, Illinois, their home. Student body of 20,672. Stevens lobs a pass inside. It comes back to him. His jumper goes. He can do that. He's not bad shooting top of the circle. They're very unselfish, Wayne Michigan State. Stevens. They do a lot of good things with, as far as the, the flow of their offense with the screens. Wayne Stevens, a 6'7 junior from Ferndale. Zuloff into the game now for the Spartans off the bench. Junior from Fort Huron, he's number 25. Harry, watched by Zuloff, trying to drive, and it's rejected by Stevens. Let's make that Anthony Miller, number 34, the big man, who's starting for Piplowski. Back in Dayton, Ohio, Michigan State up 8-2, to two, Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps, Southwest Missouri State, 1-7 for seven from the field so far. Murdoch and Crawford continue in the backcourt, and they've added Rodney Perry, as you mentioned, number 14 to their lineup, off the bench. Rebounding's been a trouble for Southwest Missouri State. Now that number 40's in the game, Graves, watch him go to the boards. This is a guy you thought would be a factor. They control again, Rakesby short from the corner. And it's rebounded by Miller. Miller, remember, the starter today for the injured Mike Peplowski, who has two ankle injuries. Expected to see some action, but they've started Miller, who's effectively a freshman. Great and screen on the weak side. Michigan State will do that. They really execute their screens well. They look for the lob. Great pass. Quick two points. Zula wide open on his rush to the basket. And a 10-2 Spartan lead. Well, I just think they got to look inside now to Tony Graves, get him the ball, let him make things happen, because if State collapses on him, that opens up the outside shooting for Southwest Missouri. Graves mishandled the ball, a steal by Zuloff. Spartan slow it down, Montgomery setting up the play. And now Montgomery driving and won't drop for him, rebounded by Rigsby. Andre Rigsby, the senior from Gulfport, Mississippi. And Poplowski getting ready to come in for Michigan State. Foul inside. Looks like Montgomery. And there is Mike Poplowski. He just joined us. Poplowski bothered by two ankle injuries, wearing a special brace on his left foot as his right ankle taped up. But he's coming in, and Judd Heathcote said he'll play. Southwest Missouri played early in the year at Purdue. That's the type of game they want to have because that score went 53-44 with Purdue winning. Halftime, it was 20-14. So Southwest Missouri is not going to look for an up-tempo game. They just want to get back in and hit a couple shots, get the ball to Graves inside. The Graves can make that move or kick it back out for the shot. Trailing by eight. Perry inside for Graves. And Graves in traffic, blocked by Poplowski. And the foul will be on Poplowski. That's exactly what they want to do. Let him attack inside. Judd's a little concerned about the foul, but when you look at it, uh, he's going to go right at you. And, and that Graves, to me, can cause problems and foul trouble problems for Michigan State if they could just get some outside shooting going. Southwest Missouri holds on to the 30-minute mark. That's when the quickness counts. Graves averages 10.5 points off the bench, and he's a 72% free throw shooter. Junior from Joliet, Illinois. Be interested to see if they want to go to a press right now, but I don't think they look to make anything in the steal. And they're going to a 1 2 1 1 trap press on a foul shot made. And that pass out of bounds, so they wind up with the ball back. Good, good job by the Bears. Good defensive strategy there by Charlie. I think he just realized as he looked out, and hey, let's try it. They're not quick. Let's see if we can get them with a quick one now. The basket here puts them right back in this ball game. Crawford will inbound it. Here's Graves outside for Murdoch. 
One more dribble down the baseline, he could have gotten that pass inside a lot better, but I, I think right now they, they, they're starting to feel confident, and the basket here puts them right back in a hunt. Graves driving on Poplowski. Off the glass won't go. Zuloff rebounding for the Spartans. Great and Montgomery steal. copped it up. Steal by Crawford. Trying to feed Graves, and it's going to be Spartans ball. Good call. Graves couldn't maintain possession. Okay, Poplowski does a pretty good job getting position, keeping him in front of him, goes up strong, hands up straight, he's got to shoot over his hands, a little long on that shot, no offensive rebound. Michigan State a 10-4 lead, and the Bears pressing again, and traveling call against Respert, so now this aggressive defense by Southwest Missouri State starting to pay off. Well, I think they just got to settle down a little bit. I think they're too anxious to score, and I think Graves is too anxious to score. I think if Graves starts to kick it back out to the open shooters because they can shoot the ball outside, especially when he puts it in the paint, we'll get some jump shots. Sophomore Tim Axley, number 34, into the game for Rigsby. He's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Has been a starter occasionally during the season. In fact, late in the season, just before the Missouri Valley Tournament, he started three games in a row. With the ball, number 34, Tim Axley. Now in the corner, Perry takes it outside. What he's shown is he's going to keep fresh guards in this game. Murdoch turnaround won't go. Poplowski rebounding. Whoa, a full-time collision there. Perry... Well, if he was there a step sooner, it was a right move, a step sooner where he had position, he would have had to charge it. You see him coming over now strong. It's too late getting there. Right idea. It was a block. Good call. Michigan State gets a side out of bounds play here. First foul against Perry. Chris Wyshynski, number three, and at guard was the man who took the hit. He's not a bad three-point shooter, Wyshynski. Sophomore from Purcellville, Virginia. Travel call. Well, this is the type of game they want. Southwest Missouri, Missouri is just looking to play ball control. They're aggressive on defense. The press has bothered them. And now it seems that Michigan State has lost their offense going at half court. If Southwest Missouri gets one basket right now, the juices start flowing. Twelve thirty to go first half. Six-point Michigan State lead. Opening game of this Midwest first round action. And Dayton and Graves That's on the feed. Game. When Crawford does that, he's so small and quick, he gets through people. When he found Graves, made a great assist underneath for a layup. Montgomery down to Wyshynski. Montgomery looked to shoot inside of Poplowski. Tenacious defense, and now hook shot by Poplowski, and that goes. That's his move. He loves that hook. You don't see that many. Clyde Lavelle was the last hook shot I saw. And for him, uh, great move across the middle. you got to turn him over his left shoulder. 12-6, Perry driving. Second foul. And with 11.49 to go. Southwest Missouri State foul number 14, Rodney Perry. That's his second personal foul. Team's third. There's timeout. Another the look at it. A 12-6 Michigan State lead. The other half of the Midwest bracket in Milwaukee yesterday, Memphis State advanced at Arkansas, Georgia Tech, and USC. All the favorites, although you thought Pepperdine might win that yeah, first game. I did. I thought Pepperdine had a shot against Memphis State as well as uh, Houston over Georgia Tech, but it didn't turn out that way. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps here in Dayton. Michigan State in white attacking to our right. Southwest Missouri State, the Bears from Springfield, Missouri. Montgomery watched closely by Jackie Crawford over to Poplowski. Shinsky. Montgomery lets fly. The lefty won't go off the back iron. And rebounded by Graves. Well, Michigan State's having trouble with their outside shooting, and they're looking to get the points off the board. So if, if Southwest Missouri gets these rebounds the way they just did, they can come back and get some points. The Bears have Crawford and Murdoch with Axley, Graves, and Rodney Perry. Now check it. They brought Andre Rigsby back in. For Perry, uh, during the last timeout. Rigsby, the starter, the senior forward from Gulfport, Mississippi. 
I think actually right now being out here doesn't give much offense and, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Charlie go to another guy on the bench to get him more shooting power on the outside. One of the other guards. Kaplowski kicks it back out. Well, he was looking underneath and, and you know, sometimes that happens. When a guard's in the air, your other players are looking to rebound and that's exactly what happens. The Nagna was looking to go to the offensive boards. McGumpley was looking to pass the ball. Didn't work. Turnover. Twelve six, Spartan lead. Ten thirty eight to go. Actually to Murdoch. Graves watched by Paplowski. Backs in and drop for him, and Paplowski picks up the foul. Well, that's what he wants to do now. He's got to make a decision on the bench. He being Judd Heathcote, do you want to have him in getting his third? You may need him in the second half, or do you bring back Miller? And I think he's going to go with Miller right now. So this is where we like that power play inside. I, I think this is what Graves can do. He's not afraid to go against anybody in Michigan State. And, and when he comes over, as you see here, watch the block out inside. Keep Poplowski off the boards, keeps the ball loose, so he gets the rebound. Very good positioning for the block out. Kapowski not too happy about a second foul. Graves missed the first of two. And the lineup for Southwest Missouri State, number 20, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards, Edwards comes in for the Jackie Bears, Crawford. number 20. He's a freshman from Little Rock. And that gives the rest to Jackie Crawford, the starter, the junior from Chicago. Graves hits the second of two. Pick up a point for the Bears, 12-7. Stegenga off to Montgomery. Shinsky, much by Murdoch, feeds Stegenga. And Stevens trying to drive. That won't go. And it's out of bounds off the Bears' Spartan ball. Good hustle by Southwest Missouri State. They're getting five people going to the boards now. Anybody gets in anybody's way, just knock a white shirt out of the way so we can get the rebound. Almost had it that time. Michigan State with Montgomery, Steginga, Miller, Wyshynski, and Stevens. Steginga from the free throw line feeds it off to Wyshynski. He can't get a clean shot. Now he does and drops it. Well, good penetration off the dribble by Wyshynski. Nice ball fake. Went up and under. Got a shot off in balance. 14 to 7. Michigan State on top. Graves lets fly from outside, and it's brought down by Stegenga. Well, I think Southwest Missouri State can go back to the three-guard offense. See, right now, actually gives nothing to their offense. So they need another shooter, another penetrator. Miller picks up his first foul and substitutions again from the Bears bench. Edwards stays in along in the backcourt, but Crawford returns. Graves goes out. Graves is out, and it's Clint Thomas back in, number 42 at center. A little too quick with his offense, Graves. Actually looks once and feeds off to Crawford. Crawford. He feeds and Rigsby misses. Spartans rebound. This is Stevens down deep. Respert, the freshman, hasn't found his shooting range yet. And the Bears rebound. Crawford went the distance, couldn't drop it, but will go to pick up the foul. Head to the line. I like the way he went to the basket then, because what that does is it force Michigan State to pick him up. Then when he does the pump fake, he can dish it off outside for the shots. Uh, Michigan State struggling with their outside shooting. When you take a look at the Respert, he's a pretty good shooter, has not gone on track. Montgomery can score on the outside. So if Southwest Missouri can just get back into the flow of where they're confident with their shooting, and I'd still get Graves back in the game before this half is over because I still think he'll settle down. He was a little anxious, but he's got to be a factor on the rebounding side because this is where Southwest Missouri's at now is small. They don't have the rebounder at both ends of the floor. Crawford got the first of two. 
Resford picked up that foul, his second. Press is still on now. They had confidence with this earlier in this half. Let's see if they get another steal. Five points, Spartan margin, 8.39 to go first half. Resford past Crawford, goes the distance, and now feeds it off. Same he thing. had the shot there, right. Digger. That's what happened. He did the same thing Montgomery did before. When you're at the basket, you're going up in the air, especially when your big guy's getting ready to the rebound, shoot the ball. If you miss it, it's like an assist. You'll get the layup off an offensive rebound. So a miscue by the freshman, John Resford from Detroit. And Bears ball. Anthony Edwards in the backcourt with Crawford. This is Rigsby, number 33. Clint Thomas down deep. And Tim Axley at the other forward position for the Bears of Southwest Missouri State. See, Axley has not done anything offensively or defensively. And maybe this is where I think Southwest Missouri can take that move and put in another quick guard to penetrate. Crawford lets fly just before the shot clock expired. And off the front iron, easily rebounded by the Spartans, Steginga. Watch for a set play now by Michigan State. Wyshynski from the corner for three. Axley rebounds. There's timeout on the floor. Yeah, timeout called with 7.21 to go. Michigan State 14, Southwest Missouri 9. Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa in New York. Uh, Michigan State up by five now. We're going to keep an eye with you on that game and take you around the country. First in Atlanta, Tulane and St. John's. St. John's in the white jerseys. You see Tulane in the dark there. And uh, Mike Tulane is up 31-27. Uh, and on a major roll, Pat, as we see St. John's shoot right here. St. John's has gone cold. They've turned it over a couple of times. The Green Wave on a 16-2 run right now. They trailed early in the game. St. John's did a good job against the Posse, which is the second team that Tulane brings into the game. They play 10 players, play two different distinct five-man teams. But St. John's has gone cold and now trails Tulane. 31-27, you see the score there, about 3.40 to halftime over in the east in uh, Worcester. It's Old Dominion and Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky up by four uh, early in this game. And you hear the key to me is the pace of the game early. Kentucky, although they were behind early and didn't get out of the gate shooting the ball very well, as long as they keep the pace, the open floor, Patino style, Open the floor up, run the floor, shoot the three, they'll be fine. ODU is surprised to even good, be in actually, the town. Yeah. They were 15 and 14, upset some teams to get in through the Colonial. A surprise to even be here. By good, I meant they did sneak up on some teams. James Madison, Richmond are the two teams they upset in the Colonial. All right, and back at Southwest uh, Missouri State and Michigan State, uh, Michigan State a young team. Well, Michigan State's a team that is really a, a nice blend of team, but really the key here, and I don't like to agree with Digger Phelps too much, but Digger said it and hit it right on the head. The size of Michigan State against the s speed of Southwest Missouri State, and really it's the key of whether they can utilize that speed against the Spartans. I'm going to send you back out to Dayton where I think I heard them playing polka music from the band earlier today. Let's go back to Tim and Digger, fellas. <laughs> Can I hear him say that he seldom agrees with you, Mike? Well, no, that, that's because Patowski came in the game. That's why they played that music. But no, I, I think the shooting's been a problem here. Both teams not shooting well at all. Michigan State started out five out of six. Now they've gone two for nine. Southwest Missouri's been two for 15. So that's the story here in Dayton, Ohio, is that both these teams are trying to get used to these rims in Dayton. Well, there were no uh, scores in that uh, brief time while we were listening to uh, Pat and Mike in New York. And it is... Now 14 to 10 with the free throw from Thomas. The problem with the, wind, the rims here at Dayton, and knowing from playing here, the rims are hard. The ball could come off long, but it's a tough place to shoot, and I think that's what both teams are struggling with right now. Tony Graves with those free throws for the Bears, and a three-point margin now, and the Bears have it back. And their fans come alive here in sold-out Dayton Arena. One of the other problems right now, when you look at the size, the quickness favors Southwest Missouri right now. They're back in the game. This is the type of game they want. They don't want up-tempo. They want to slow it down, play smart at half-court. Rigsby, Graves, Thomas, 
Biggest lineup they can feel right now for Southwest Missouri State. Graves can be a factor inside for Southwest Missouri. He's the one key player that can give damage to Michigan's front line. And when Michigan State gets in foul trouble, the quickness will play a part in the second half. Murdoch off the front iron, gets it back again. There was that long rebound we talked about. Hit the rim, came back to the foul line. Guards will be factors in rebounding here, not your front line players. Murdoch and Crawford in the backcourt. They were the starters. This is Graves. Inside, nowhere to go. Murdoch misses. They kept it alive. That, you credit Graves for that. This kid is really a solid player. I think he's going to give them trouble before this game off. Number 40, Tony Graves has got good offensive moves. He's been a little anxious early. Let's see what he does now on this possession. Charlie Spoonauer got him out after he was struggling. Gave him a little bit of a rest. Now back into the game, and Digger Phelps prime factor today. And driving is Crawford. Jackie Crawford, five foot seven. He's the dynamite. This crowd's going to get into this game. Southwest Missouri believes because of their conditioning, their defense, and come right back. Now watch him go down the middle. No one helps to the ball. When they start to help, that's when he's going to dish it off. But he can score, and he will take control of this game. He's their go-to guy when they need points, and this is a big three-point play. At five foot seven, in for the layup, plus the five. Four points, going for five, and a chance to tie. Montgomery picked up his second foul for the Spartans. Watch the press. State had trouble with this early in the half. Montgomery on Crawford. Montgomery, the lefty hits. Sometimes nice move. you get the guy's left-handed. You had him on the right side. You came back and that's his natural shot. He's a left-hand shooter. That's the way it looked as Crawford went by him to his right hand. 4.55 to go, a two-point game now. They played Purdue in the Big Ten early in. It was a 53-44 game, and that's the type of game they want today. Graves missed, but it's rebounded by Thomas. So Southwest Missouri has no fear right now for a Big Ten team. They're anxious to play this game, anxious to get to the penetration game and get to the fouls. They're a very good foul shooting team. They're back off for Rigsby, and Rigsby hits. We're tied at 16. Andre Rigsby. And now the Spartans find themselves in a basketball game. They had their own way early. Montgomery for three, and it's the little guy, Crawford, up, and he is fouled. Well, I think Judd Heathco right now, he, he forgot. He, he's got Restford on the bench. Uh, he needs his outside shooting, and I, I think one, one or two guys have got to make this thing go for State on the outside, and Restford can. Stegen picked up the foul as first. We're in Dayton, Ohio, this first-round Midwest game, and the Michigan State Spartans, Digger Phelps, had their way early on, but we now have a tie game and a chance for the lead. Jackie Crawford at the line. Well, Jackie Crawford's a guy who'll take this game over. Rebounding was a problem to Graves came into the game for Southwest Missouri. State dominant game early. Shot five for six, and that was all off rebounding. He had three quick transitions where they came down the floor, got some layups. Well, Southwest Missouri State now just feels confident. They're back in it. They got the lead. And you got to give this kid the credit because he's the guy who will take charge. He knows his personnel and knows that he can go one-on-one -on -one against Montgomery. And this is the matchup. Can Montgomery, number 11, shut down Graves? Number 11. They've been hot at the line as Crawford has seven points. He averages just under 12 points a game. 4 10 to go, first half. The Bears lead the Spartans by two. What Crawford's doing is denying the point guard Montgomery the ball, and this is where they're struggling. Washinsky. Good play. And a jump ball forced by Crawford. What made that work? Jackie Crawford is denying Montgomery the ball. That forces. Michigan State to have someone else bring the ball up. That throws their whole rhythm off. Real good strategy by Southwest Missouri. Possession arrow, Spartans. They inbound it, Wyshynski. As it from Zulab. But he showed substituting now as the Bears have come back on his Spartans. And this is where the quickness is paying off defensively. Southwest Missouri believes in their man-to-man -man defense. Stevens for three. Zulab can't control the rebound. Wyshynski. Zuloff again, and he's fouled. Well, Zuloff did a good job keeping the ball alive, but I thought Jackie Crawford just stood and watched. And when Wyshynski came in, that was the big problem. 
Okay, here's what we're talking about. Montgomery has to run the offense, but watch this deny right here by Crawford. Does a great job keeping the ball away. Wyshynski is not a point guard. He's a second guard. This has bothered Michigan State's offense. Montgomery goes out. Murdoch picked up the foul. He'll off at the line. Oh, no, Murdoch's staying in. He just had a little uh, coaching little consultation Judd. over there. Yeah, he wanted to know where Judd bought that tie. That, that tie <laughs> is not Judd. I think his wife got him a, a late Christmas present because I, that is not the Judd Heathcote I remember in college basketball. Okay, Retzbert's back in the game for Wisnowski. So when you take a look at that, I, I see now where State is going to have the second guard. Retzbert can handle the ball, but he's got to get his shooting going. He's been cold to start, and that's what State needs right now, another outside shooter. Zilla at the line. Chance to tie. Well, there's a closer look at Judge New tie. Yeah, but it's a 90s tie, and he still dresses like it's in the 50s. <laughs> well, those ties were all back. Let's yeah, but check it. out his shoes and pants. He doesn't have cuffs <laughs> on the pants. Zulak can't make the second, but it comes back to him on the rebound, and he turns it into a three-point play. Good offensive rebound. Went to the board strong. And that's where State can get you. State can really get on the boards, and they've got to do a better job of getting on the boards. Spartans regain the lead, 19 to 18. Great speed. Crawford. Crawford had some room, and he hits. See, Montgomery had his hands down. Crawford read it, shot right over him. At five foot seven versus six foot two, Crawford has no respect right now for Montgomery. Look at the way he's challenging him defensively. Crawford, the junior from Chicago, now nine points. Steal, good effort by Stegenga. Bears all over him. Not backcourt. And it's rebounded by Murdoch. Bears playing with more zeal and confidence now, no question. This is the right combination to have on the floor. They got the quickness, they got Graves inside, number 40, who can do damage. They haven't gone to him yet. Look for him to get the ball inside to make something happen to, to even add to this offensive flurry that they have going right now. Murdoch driving the baseline. Exactly what we talked about. They're a good one-on-one -on -one team. State is not quick enough to handle this one-on-one -on -one penetration. Michigan State needs an outside shot right now to set play. First points for Murdoch, a 22-19 lead for the Bears. Montgomery gets loose. Won't drop. Good rebound by Stegenga. Bears all over him and a foul call. What? I think Michigan State's playing too quick, and that's what Southwest Missouri wants them to do to get those quick shots rather than work and get the ball inside. They forgot how they got the ball inside. Now, great paint line, baseline penetration. Murdoch has him beat, goes up and under. Good, strong move. Restford did not have them, and they're quick. And this is something I think is going to be a factor before this game's over because I think Michigan State will be tired if Southwest Missouri can hold on for the first 30 minutes of this game. There's another tie, huh? Yeah, this is so far a tie contest and almost a tie in ties. Stegenga after the foul to Rigsby, his first. He's a real workhorse on this team, Matt Gagan. I, and I like the way he just comes after you on, on offense and defense. He can turn this game on. He can step up a notch. Right now, he'll, he'll make this foul shot. The senior from Grand Rapids brings it to 22 to 20. There's timeout on the floor. 2.12 to go, and we have a timeout here in Dayton. A two-point game. The Bears on top. Well, here's how things have gone so far in yesterday's action. Uh, only uh, Iowa and Connecticut, the lower seeds, to uh, lose to the higher seeds. O'Neal, 11 blocks for yeah. LSU. Attorney and not Richard. only that, what really impressed me was Maurice Williamson scoring 30 points as a guard. That's a big factor, and that's going to be an interesting matchup with Indiana. Michigan State now comes out of this timeout playing the zone. They're trying to slow up the penetration of which, right now, Southwest Missouri State's been on a 13-6 run the last 5 9 152 to go. A two-point lead for Southwest Missouri State over Michigan State. Tim Ryan and Digger Feltz here in Dayton. They'll still look for the good shots outside. That's Murdoch. Had the shot. Didn't make it. But it's rebounded underneath by the Bears. And it's Thomas. That's a big offensive rebound for Clint Thomas. He went up strong. Graves was inside mixing it up. This is the right team on the floor right now for Southwest Michigan. They're controlling the offense. They're controlling the defense. On the missed shot, watch the position. Bangs inside. Gets good control. Good ball fake. Goes up strong to the rim for the three-point attempt. 
Stegengog picked up the foul. Thomas missed the free throw. Spartans have the ball. Well, the pressure is still full court. They're going after it full court, Tim. And when you take a look right now, what, what is really important, um, I, I look at Wyshynski. I don't think he's a good point guard, and Michigan State's having trouble getting into their offense. The sophomore from Purcellville, Virginia, off the bench, number three, working the backcourt with a freshman Respert for Michigan State. Murdoch watching Wyshynski, trying to get the shot away and does. Great move. Good one-on-one. -on -one. The slip helped a little bit. He kept his composure, got the shot off as he got fouled. Wyshynski, to me, I think I just think he's a better a better shooting guard. Wyshynski knows how to play the game, but I, I think Montgomery's struggling, and now Judd's looking for a combination to get into his offense. So with Respert in the backcourt, Wyshynski in the backcourt, uh, it's not really, it's like two guards playing, and none of them are really point guards. Wyshynski makes it a three-point play. He averages 6.4 a game off the bench. How about the shot went in left hand, made a foul shot right hand? It's a dandy shot going to the hoop. He's got six points in this State's first State's staying in the zone right now. One-point lead for Southwest Missouri State. Look for Graves inside if they get him open. There's Graves tied up. Off for Thomas. Crawford checks the clocks. 20 seconds on the shot clock. The Southwest Missouri's happy right now. They're back in the game. They've got the lead, and they're going to play smart for a good shot. Murdoch turned back by Respert. Kicks it out for Crawford, and Crawford trying to get inside now. He lets fly, and it won't go. Rebound Thomas. Two Spartans on him. Well done. Stevens with a block. Respert for Zula. Back outside, Steginga. 20 State. seconds left. He'll take the last shot of the half. 15 and counting down. Respert stops and drives. He's short. He's been struggling shooting in his first half. Bears rebound. Five seconds left. Murdoch blocked by Steginga. So the Southwest Missouri State Bears struggled early against the Spartans, who are the number five seeds in the Midwest. But right now, the underdog Bears lead it 24 to 23. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Keystone Light and Keystone Dry, bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? From Dayton, Ohio, at halftime, the Missouri Valley Tournament champion, Southwest State, leading Michigan State 24 to 23. And Tim Ryan with Digger Phelps here in Dayton. And the guard play of this Bears team, the underdog coming into the game, has really been the difference, kind of what you expected. Total difference. Montgomery is not in the game for Michigan State. Jackie Crawford's taken over the whole game, both ends of the floor. He's the guy that's defending against Montgomery. Montgomery cannot handle Crawford, as we see here, uh, they use a good job of making the baseline screens. Now watch what happens with the play action over here with Crawford trying to get open. He makes his cut, but watch, he uses two screens because when we freeze here, we've got one, two, and Montgomery is stuck behind Kapowski. So now what this creates, trying to recover, he overextends, he goes down the middle, dumps back to Graves, three-point play inside. Well, Crawford wound up with the nine points, and he has the ball as the Bears start this second half up by one, 24 to 23. And this team is 19 and two when they lead at halftime. But the real scoring difference has been on the line. 10 of 12 free throws for the Bears, who shoot 77 percent in that category, and that has been their offense in the first half. That's the strategy: solid defense, get to the foul line, and this is where they got back after being down 10 zip. And now they're controlling the game tempo right where they want to be. Crawford, number 12, and uh, Crawford, 11, pardon me, Murdoch, 12 in the backcourt. Rigsby, Thomas up front, and Crawford hits for 11 points now. He has no fear. Watch him right now work one-on-one -on -one defense and really bother Montgomery. And this has been a problem in the first half for Michigan State to get into their offense. Stevens driving a power move over Graves, and it's 26 to 25. That was a set play where they had four guys across the line. The back door went from the high post, and they got a layup. Oh, 
Bears original starting five from the beginning of this game. On the floor now with Rigsby, Thomas, Murdoch, Crawford. One team, Graves for Lester Turner. Turner is not here. So uh, he started the game and State going down the line again with Stevens. Well, this is State's best lineup. When you take a look at Pekowski, he's back in the game. He's been hampered by ankle injuries Thursday before the Iowa game, and then in the Iowa game where he injured his other ankle. This is the best team the State has. They're comfortable. They don't have to worry about mismatches, and they really run off that rebound. And this is where right now Southwest Missouri's got to gain control of the board situations and not allow Michigan State to get to the transition. Second foul on Rigsby. Eight points for Stevens going for nine. Graves knocked the ball loose. It'll be Southwest ball off a Spartan player right at the sideline. Graves again starting this half. Very important because he is a great rebounder and plus he can score inside and go into the paint looking for points as well as fouls on Michigan State's front line. Starts at Poplowski playing on those two injured ankles starting the second half along with Steginga, Montgomery, Stevens, and Resker. This is the pace Southwest Missouri State wants. They're not in an up-tempo game. They want to be very patient, keep the game in the 50s. They feel they can win. Graves over to Blasky off the glass. That's his move. They'll go inside with him, and now when Michigan State Tony collapses Graves. on him inside, that's when Murdoch and Crawford can hit the shots on the outside. Tony Graves, the 6'8 junior from Joliet. Blasky for Montgomery. Taking a good feed for Poplowski, and he's fouled by Graves. Well, he seems to be a lot stronger right now. I, I think when you get in that situation, when you have two ankles that hurt you, and you forget which one's hurting, you just go out and play. And you can see his left ankle has that special brace. You see the tape on the right ankle, and he's doing what he's he's doing very well. He can go inside. He's taking Graves to the board. Graves will get in foul trouble. That's going to hurt Southwest Missouri. Poplowski, a 69% free throw shooter. The chance to tie, and he does. Martins have the lead back. Strong on the boards, and that's what Southwest Missouri is going to have problems doing with the offensive rebounding. Five people have to go to the boards for Southwest Missouri in order to keep Michigan State off the boards. Rigsby. Rigsby. Here in Dayton, just underway in the second half, the Spartans of Michigan State regain the lead, 32 to 30 on the drive by Respert, his first points of the game for the freshman. From Detroit, Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps here. We saw the Michigan State Spartans take a 10-2 lead early in the first half. And then Southwest Missouri State, the underdogs, battle back with some outstanding guard play and good work at the free throw line. And this is the first of four games here in Dayton today. We'll be following with Cincinnati and Delaware this afternoon. And then tonight, Kansas, the top seed against Howard and Evansville and Texas El Paso. What happened in the first half, Southwest Missouri got down 10 to zip, but the guard play by Jackie Crawford, the speed, the penetration, created where Southwest Missouri is at their best, getting to the foul line. They were 10 for 12 in the first half, didn't shoot well, Michigan State got cold, and I credit Jackie Gro uh, Crawford for guarding Mark Montgomery of Michigan State, but taking State out of their offense. Three-point Spartan lead. And this is what State has to understand. Michigan State is does not have the quickness to control the penetration that Southwest Missouri likes to do. What you just saw is how they're going to play when they want to make the penetration move. Here's where Montgomery cannot handle the five foot seven guard. And who says a five foot seven guard cannot play in college basketball division one? He goes up strong, draws the foul. Forget blocking the shot, he's at the line shooting too. Now watch the press because this is also barred at uh, Michigan State in the first half because Southwest Missouri has the quickness on the floor and they're not afraid to go after in keeping the ball away from Mark Montgomery to run the offense. It'll force Respert to handle the ball and he'd rather be a second guard. Three fouls on Montgomery at this point, so that can soon become a factor. 17.06 remaining second half. Oh, 
The problem is right now for Michigan State, they may have to go back to the zone. They did it before the second half ended, and that sort of like took the momentum away of, of his penetration. But when you play a man, you can't guard him. So look for State maybe to get the lead and go back zone. Stevens, but no basket. No basket. One thing about Michigan State, on any missed shot or any quick outlet, they're taking it to score. Stevens, number 31, gets down the floor very, very well. Peplowski can get down the floor very, very well. And when Miller comes in the game for a 6'9 big man, they'll move down the floor. Graves picked up his second foul. Peplowski is rejected by Graves. Montgomery standing on the free throw of the uh, three-point line, unable to connect. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if this effect right now in Big Mike as he gets up slowly how his ankles are because and he Resford, landed on the floor. Respert also got hurt on that play, and he's taking himself off the floor. Apparently, got looks like he got hit in the mouth. Well, 270 pounds came after you know I mean when that roll over there. Uh, he is leaving the floor. Might be bleeding. We'll wait and see. So Sean Respert, the freshman guard from Detroit, heads to the locker room for repairs. Okay, here's a shot by Montgomery. The ball goes up and it's a loose ball. Matt McMagnet makes a pretty good job here as he looks to get open. Back to play. And we're back live with Steven. From outside won't go Graves starting to becoming a rebound force in this second half. Comes away with it for Southwest Missouri State. Spartans by one. They trail by a point at the half. Rodney Perry, number 14, in the lineup now, along with Axley. As Charlie Spoonar makes some early substitutions here in the second half. They're very patient, working to look inside or looking for penetration to go one on one. Perry. Rebound by the Spartans. Montgomery. Good, quick feed for Stegenga and. Well, that could, it depends on if he moved on the slide, but. Yeah, it'll be against the Bears, Axley, Tim Axley, number 34. The State does this well. Steginga does a good job of moving down the floor, takes the angle towards the basket, draws the foul. He'll be shooting two. State has picked up the tempo this half. They're running more, they're looking to hit the boards a lot harder, making that quick pass down the floor, and their big people run the floor very, very well. Stegenga had five points in the first half, and he's a guy that averages a 10-6. Miller comes in for Peplowski, Anthony Miller, who started the game for the injured Peplowski. He gave it four minutes. You don't know what he can do, but I, I think the fact that he pounded inside on the boards against Graves with Graves in a negative foul situation. Southwest Missouri cannot afford to lose Graves. I'm surprised Michigan State doesn't do more of going inside to get Graves in foul trouble and dominate the boards better that way. Yeah, he gives up experience when he takes Poplowski out for Miller. Miller is a sophomore, but he missed last year for academic problems, so he's effectively a freshman. An outstanding high school player at Benton Harbor, Michigan. This is Perry. Now for Axley. Crawford, the 5'7 junior guard from Chicago. Pass tipped away, but showing his quickness, recovering it. Graves underneath Miller and fouled on route. It'll be against the Ginga. I think one thing right now with Southwest Missouri State, I don't know if Tim Axley is going to be involved with the offense, but it really helps Stegnanga to cheat off him and help on the post against Graves. So one adjustment that Southwest Missouri might be thinking about is to bring in another guard to penetrate and let Oxley just sit out for a while and see what more type of motion they get against that. Three fouls on Stegenga. Graves at the line. Mashinsky's back into the lineup. And for the first time today for the Spartans, Eric Snow, number 13. There's a steal from Wyshynski by Perry. Well, as I said earlier, Wyshynski's not a good ball handler. Snow comes in from Montgomery. They're having trouble 
struggling against the pressure that Southwest Missouri's quickness throws on you defensively. Southwest Missouri State foul number 11, Jackie Crawford. And Crawford picks up the foul as first. Here's the steal. Good hands. He comes to the inside, takes it off, comes back to him, goes in close. Great move, great layup. They're back in the game. Syracuse leads it all off, and of course, a lot of speculation about whether oh, yeah. the academics can, can handle the uh, Big East stars from Syracuse. Jim Beheim was a happy guy when he won the Big East tournament, but going home that night when he heard on the bus they've got Princeton, it took away the, the, the thrill of the Big East championship. Foul called inside. Actually, picks up his second, number 34, and Stegica goes to the line. A one-point lead for Southwest Missouri State. Sean Respert went to the Michigan State locker room for repairs. Apparently a split lip, and uh, word is that uh, they're going to have to stitch him up. Meanwhile, as Digger uh, told us before, commercial Eric Snow uh, being forced into the lineup, and obviously the injury to Respert part of that, but uh, you feel they just got to try yeah. and improve their guard play. Right. I, I think they're looking for a point guard to run this team. Montgomery's not doing it, and it's obvious when you looked at the steal that we had with Wachinski, he's not doing it. So now Snow's the guy that's got to look at this. Like, I'm three quarterbacks in the football team. He needs one just to make one completed pass. They've forgotten to get the ball inside where I think they can do damage to Southwest Missouri State because of the defensive guard play and quickness of Southwest Missouri's guards. Stegging and missing the second one. It's tied at 35 at 14.36 to go. Eric Snow's brother is Percy Snow, the linebacker with Kansas City, former Michigan State football star. That ball loosened all the way to the backcourt. They're covered by Jackie Crawford, who has been the main man for Southwest Missouri State. Such play here now for Southwest Missouri with the shot clock down at 10. Crawford for Axley, and Axley has it. Big time shot for Axley. You know, he sits there all day. Hasn't been much of a factor in the offense, but he hit a money shot right there to put them back up 37-35. The sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Miller underneath. He can't drop it. And Graves rebounds. Right. Good defense by Graves to force that bad shot. Graves, yeah, I'll uh, tell you something. If this gets under 10, Michigan State's going to have a problem because this is where Southwest Missouri has the conditioning, the defense, and the foul shooting. And that's going to be a factor as we wind down this game. Well, it was a big factor in the first half, and this team shoots 77% from the charity strike. Outside, this is Perry, Rodney Perry, Axley, Graves. Miller gave him the room, and Graves missed the shot. Wyshynski trying to rebound, and it's controlled by Miller. Wyshynski driving. He can make Outside that. Outside for Stegigov. Yeah. He does. He can make that. He's not afraid to shoot that. He's a money player. He'll pick up yeah, Michigan Stegigov. State today any way they need it. He, he just rebounds. He'll play the defense. He'll also hit a key basket. Tied at 37. We've talked about the Plowski's ankles that have had him in and out of the lineup today. Stegenga playing with a sore foot that he's having to contend with some pain. Crawford for Perry. Clint Thomas outside. He doesn't want to be there. Feeds it off to Crawford. He's going. Crawford. They believe. They, they, this team, they just believe they can win this game. And they're not going to pull back. They smell that 10-minute mark, and they know that Michigan State's still slow to guard them once they go to their penetration game when they spread it out. This is Snow. Snow feeding it into Stevens. who didn't see it. Harry. They'll play smart. Good move right there. Didn't get over anxious on the transition. Worked the half-court offense, run the clock off, look to drive, or look for Graves to go one-on-one. -on -one. Graves in traffic, and Travelers trying to step around Stegenga. Tough call. I really thought he got hammered. Really? We have a timeout on the floor, and the Bears lead the Spartans by three. Mm -hmm. 
In the southeast, running concurrently with us, St. John's and Tulane are on the court right now, and Tulane with a four-point lead over St. John's. You see the action ahead. They'll follow with Oklahoma State and Georgia Southern this afternoon. Tulane's better than Penn State. I don't think people realize how good Tulane is, and that's why St. John's is struggling in that game. Here, it's a three-point lead for the 12th seed at Southwest Missouri State Bears over Michigan State. Kaplowski back in the lineup for the Spartans. Wyshynski tries from outside, won't go for him. Stevens rebounding, and he's fouled on the way up. Well, that's what Michigan State has to do. Run a set play so you know where your rebounders are. Stevens is a great offensive rebounder, and from that standpoint, he had the weak side position to get the position for the shot, gets fouled. Could have been a three-point play. He'll settle for two. There's freshman Sean Respert, who had uh, some medical attention in the locker room, a couple of stitches in his lip, apparently. He's expected uh, to come back. In fact, our ace researchers tells us tell us that there were seven stitches in his lower lip. I like that, like the hockey players. Yeah. Go get stitched up, come back out there. He personally put them in. No, let's look for Michigan State right now. It's been a timeout. This is a good time to go zone to break up that penetration that Southwest Missouri does so well. Stevens brings it to 40-39 from the free throw line. Bears by one, 11.20 to go. Crawford, Perry in the backcourt. Thomas. The plain man. Surprisingly, right now for that timeout. And Yusuf Washington now in the lineup for Southwest Missouri State, a 6'8 junior from Denver, number 44. His first appearance. Perry driving. That's what they like to do. They're going to do this the rest of the game. They'll take 30 seconds off that shot clock, get a reversal, and drive to the basket because State can't match up to a man-to-man -man because State is not as quick as Southwest Missouri. Zula picked up the foul. Judd Heathcote didn't like it. Now, Southwest Missouri making back with a press right here. Uh, I still think maybe under that 11-minute mark, you may see Graves come back in the game because they need his game. He makes them work inside on the boards as well as offense. Perry misses the first. At the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet players of the game, and in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Perry's second is a miss. Kapowski battling for the rebound and comes up with it. Wyshynski and Montgomery now the guard pair for Michigan State. Zulov, Stevens, Kaplowski up front. Wyshynski. And it's rebounded by Washington. Zulov hit him on a foul. And Zulov fouled him. Exactly what they want because they're building up towards 10. And when you get when you get to that bonus of 10, they'll be shooting two foul shots in every possession. So at the 10 minute mark, they're at eight right now. And that's very, very important. On the other side of it, team fouls only have four. So you're talking about some one-on-one -on -one situations, maybe at the end of the game, which could be another factor against Michigan State, who has some players who are not good foul shooters. Respert returns to the Spartan lineup. Michigan State with four team fouls in the second half. Wyshynski grabbed him, so that's foul number nine. No, that's that's uh, that's five for Michigan State. Eight for Southwest Missouri. Right, we got it backwards. That's all right. So it's the Bears' ball. They lead by a point. 10-27 to go. And Washington inside screen on the baseline got him open. Out of bounds play versus man to man. The screen got him open. Yusuf Washington, the junior from Denver, with his first points, and Montgomery fouled before the shot. Well, it's a, a case now where Montgomery goes one-on-one -on, -one on Crawford for all the foul. Uh, 11, That's his second. That's his second. Team's Three new substitutions for Northern Southwest Northern Missouri State, State Murdoch returns. Stevens, Rigsby and Graves. Perry goes out Ray. along with Washington and Clint Thomas. Rigsby. Zulov leaves for Michigan State. Stevens is in. So now the Spartans have Poplowski, Stevens, Wyshynski, Montgomery, and Respert. Montgomery from the line. Won't go for him. Poplowski rebounding. And what a play there by Graves on Stevens. Graves 
has become a force inside, particularly in the second half for Southwest Missouri State. Well, he's the guy that, that has really dominated the inside play for Southwest Missouri today. Ball, ball faking on the boards, getting offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. Graves kicks it out. Crawford lets fly, won't go, and it's rebounded by Stevens. Got away with a walk there. Graves on the baseline. Montgomery calling the play for the Spartans. Lebowski, bad ankles and all, and it's knocked away from him by Axley. What happens with Poplowski? He just holds the ball too long, and people are going at him, and that's why they're blocking his shot. Now, see, he gets it, takes one dribble to the baseline. As he ball fakes, this is where the help comes from the weak side. Poplowski on the feed from Steven. That's and his it's shot. 42 to 41. He can step out and hit that little eight-foot jumper on the baseline. Crawford checks with Coach Charlie Spoonauer for this play. Murdoch, yes. See, coming behind those trails, where the screens coming behind the trailer, they're getting open. Murdoch just had his man lost on the screen, took the ball, went to the baseline, one-on-one -on -one in the middle. Stevens pushed from behind by Rigsby just as he got the feed from Respert. Third foul on Rigsby. Andre Rigsby, the senior. And he'll be shooting now, two shots. Tenth team foul against the Bears, so Stevens will shoot two. Wayne Stevens at the line for Michigan State, two throws. Gets the first one. He's a 73% shooter from the free throw line. He's got 13 points. Andre uh, Dwayne uh, Stevens, a junior from Ferndale, Michigan. This is the second. Very interesting. Going one for two there. This, that's going to be a factor for Southwest Missouri if Michigan State doesn't make their fouls versus the foul shooting of Southwest Missouri, where they've been shooting close to 80% the last four or five games on the line. Graves watched by Poplowski. Great move. Called the charge. Got help on the weak side. Third foul on Graves. Bunauer didn't like that one. Got his man had position to get down that baseline. Well, he got by Poplowski. Did a good job there, but when he turned, he didn't see the defender. When he was in the air, he came down. It was good position. Good call. Montgomery and Respert, the starting backcourt for the Spartans together again. Now, Respert has really not been a factor today. Poplowski. Inside for Montgomery now. Graves got a hand to knock it away, but it went off Poplowski, so it's Bears ball. Well, they're doing the right thing. They got to get Graves out of the game, so they're going inside to Poplowski because Graves has three fouls, and if he gets his fourth, then they've got to make a decision. Do you play him or keep him on the bench? I'd play him. You're playing for today, not tomorrow. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining. Two-point lead for the Bears from Springfield, Missouri. Key possession here for Southwest Missouri. They got to score in this possession. Gives them that cushion they need. Crawford driving. And he picks up the offensive foul. Wyshynski had position. That's his third. See, sometimes the official gets in a bad angle. And I thought that was a bad angle because he had position. Watch the slide in because Wyshynski can't guard him. That's yeah. definitely going the other way. I definitely going the other way. Bad call. And Charlie Spoonauer does too. We'll be back. Well, it's uh, Jackie Crawford, the 5'7 guard, leading the way for Southwest Missouri State. They have a two-point lead. They've been hot from the free throw line. But Wyshynski now has tied it at 44. Michigan State had a 10-2 lead back in the first half. And they're in a dogfight now, tied at 44. Well, Southwest Missouri's lost their penetration. They're not driving the basket enough, not doing the things they did in the first half to get to that foul line. With the seven-minute mark coming up, that's one thing they have to do or go to Graves inside. Perry is back in. Axley is out for Southwest Missouri State. That's Perry with the ball. Number 14. Rigsby, number 33. 
Crawford 11, Murdoch 12, and Graves number 40 inside. Graves over Peplowski, but Peplowski comes down with the rebound. See right there in that last possession, Crawford did not take Wyshynski one-on-one, and there's no way Wyshynski can guard him one-on-one. Wyshynski, Montgomery, Respert in effect three guards out there now for the Spartans and Kaplowski wide open from Montgomery. He can hit the eight-foot baseline jumper. That's his range. Pretty good play inside. Seven points for Kaplowski playing on those bad ankles, getting more time here in the second half. They need him out there. Crawford pops it up. Respert, the freshman. They will run a set play here, looking to go inside. Loose ball, recovered by the Spartans. Here comes Montgomery. Poplowski likes it from there. Well, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's playing hurt with two bad ankles. He can hit the baseline jumper, and he's been the difference this half for Michigan State. Rebounding and scoring those jumpers. Four-point lead now for the Spartans. Under six minutes. Rigsby. Carry to Crawford. Graves working the post. Poplowski battling with him inside. He's got to go right now. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Harry. Good follow by Graves. Great offensive rebound. But see, the penetration led to the offensive rebound, and that's what Southwest Missouri has to do for, for themselves to get back into this game. Montgomery closely guarded by Crawford, who comes away with it. Crawford to Rigsby. I mean, that's Crawford. Montgomery can't bring the ball down. He's worried about guarding him on the other end of the floor, but on offense, he can't handle the ball against him. He just stripped him clean. Watch Crawford dig into him. You got to love the way he handed the ball off when he had the clear shot there. Two on zero. Very unselfish. At 5'7", he didn't want to miss the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to the bigger guy. Oshinsky. Head fake. Now drive. Good play. See, at the end of games, the teams that like to penetrate, they're going to do the scoring. And that's what's happened with both teams right now. Penetration leads to scoring in the ball game. Draws Nine. the fouls. Nine points for Chris Wyshynski, the sophomore from Virginia. And a big play by him, a two-point lead for the Spartans. Three fifty to go here as the jumper from the baseline from Murdoch. Southwest Missouri State tied now with the Spartans of Michigan State. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps here in Dayton. First round action. Our first of four games today from this site. And it looks like it's going to go right to the wire. Tied at 50. Wyshynski. Using Kaplowski won't go. The follow by Stevens. Well, that's what Michigan State does very, very well. They get on the offensive board. Of course, when you take a look at Kaplowski's hit three key jumpers on the baseline. Wyshynski's made some great moves to put the offense back for State. But this kid right here with the ball, Jackie Crawford, has been the story of this game. Offensively and defensively, he's made this a great basketball game for a first round. 15 points for the five foot seven guard. Perry. Rigsby, Murdoch, Graves, and Crawford. The lineup for Southwest Missouri State. Rigsby in and out. Montgomery grabs a rebound, and he's fouled by Graves. Four on him, and not a good foul to take their digger because the ball was already in Montgomery's possession. Well, he wasn't in position to get the offensive rebound, and that's been one of the weaknesses of Southwest Missouri, whereby Michigan State with Stevens and Miller, and of course, Petlowski, they can really dominate the boards. And yet, the, the problem has been is the guard play of Michigan State initiating an offense. Montgomery has struggled all day with this. Uh, Wachinski's tried to play the point guard, and Resford's been in and out. He had seven stitches early. He's back in the game, but he's more of a second guard. Montgomery goes to the line, and that big number 54 Kaplowski playing with two sore ankles, but he's been a big factor for the Spartans here in the second half. Right now, Graves is the best inside player that Southwest Missouri has, 
He's got four fouls, but you still have to play with that same intensity. He can still be a factor with four fouls, and yet watch Crawford take over now because it's money time. Montgomery makes it a three-point Spartan lead, and we have a timeout here in Dayton. Michigan State 53 to 50. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps in Dayton, 2.49 to play. Michigan State leading here by three, and Tulane over St. John's, number 10 over number seven in the Southeast today, and they'll await the winner of Oklahoma State and Georgia Southern. We welcome you folks who have been watching that game. We have a three-point game going here in Dayton. Southwest Missouri State in the dark jerseys. They're from Springfield, Missouri. They're the 12th seed in this region and against number five, Michigan State. Trailing by three are the Bears. And Graves nearly cocks it up and draws the foul from Respert. All right, this kid, number 11, Jackie Crawford, has been probably the one that has controlled the basketball game more than any other 5'7 guard I've seen in a long time. That's why it's such a close game. They penetrate very, very well. Right now, this half, they haven't gone to the penetration game they wait, the way they did in the first half. Michigan State, to me, the story of the second half has been from Klauski. He's been hurt. He hit three key baseline jumpers, and that's why State has the lead right now. Crawford and Murdoch are the guards. Axley off the bench, number 34 with the ball. Graves got a force inside, number 40, for Southwest Missouri State, and Rigsby, number 33. That's the lineup for the Bears. And it's Rigsby, it won't go for him, and it's rebounded by Poplowski out the hands of his teammate Wyshynski. Wyshynski working the backcourt, uh, now up in the forward position with, in effect, three guards. One of them is Montgomery, who fed it to Wyshynski, and Respert, number 24, the freshman. Stevens and Poplowski up front for the Spartans. State will run a set play here because if they miss the shot, they got the advantage getting the offensive rebounds. Graves knocks it loose, but the Spartans keep control. Respert. 130 to go. Eight seconds left on the shot clock for the Spartans of Michigan State. Montgomery hits, and they open a five-point lead. Plus, now they're going to the zone defense. They're going to take away the penetration of Crawford, force them to shoot outside. Crawford in and out. 105 to go. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps here in Dayton. The 12th seeded Southwest Missouri State Bears, who were leading Michigan State, the number five seed earlier in this second half, but the Spartans have come back strongly. You gotta get a quick foul. And they do. Well, what Michigan State's gonna do right now, they're looking for the right play at the right time. Timeout on the floor, the Spartans by five. Forty-eight point five seconds left here in Dayton. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps watching Michigan State trying to protect that five-point lead. And they had a, a an early eight-point lead in the first half, but Southwest Missouri, Missouri State left led by a point at the half and it's been a, the case of uh, little guys against big guys and it's reflected in the two individual scores well when you look at jackie crawford the five seven guard for southwest missouri he just dominated the game offensively and defensively defensively he bothered montgomery and that's why it's such a low scoring game because state could never get in their offense offensively in the first half I thought Southwest Missouri had more penetration the second half with only 16 fouls. It shows you that they didn't get into the penetration game they had in the first half, and this is why State has control of the game right now. Senior guard Mark Montgomery at the line for the Spartans makes it a six-point lead. Stevens with 15 points leads Michigan State. The junior forward and a pair for Montgomery widens it to seven. And it's been the rebounding, too, for Michigan State. Plus, Peplowski coming in, hitting three baseline jumpers that really iced this game for Michigan State. Gave him the confidence to go. Now State's just going to stay in his own and force the outside shot. Graves inside is fouled by Respert. The freshman guard for Michigan State. Meanwhile, in Wooster Mass, 64 to 59. And St. John's out of it, dumped by Tulane. Okay, with 31 seconds left, we got to make both foul shots. That's how Southwest Missouri is thinking right now. Go for a quick steal in the press or go for the quick foul. 
Still options to try to get this thing to make up the seven. If they cut it to five here, that means you got two possessions, you get two three-point shots. Southwest Missouri State very strong at the line, 77% on the season. And Graves uh, shoots 72% himself from this point. Michigan State, of course, they want to get it in bounds. No, they're going to get fouled, make the foul shot. So he's got a good foul shooting team out on the floor right now, Judd Heathcote. Five-point margin. Under 30 seconds we go. Steal by Crawford, and Montgomery they gets it, it back, but it's Bears ball. You may want to take a timeout to set up a key play. Look for a three right now. Charlie Spoonauer does exactly that. 25.9 seconds left. Five points is a lot of points when you look at the score, but it's really quick points. When you take a look at that number five, you still have time to make the two. Because if you go for the two, that means you got three left. You can still tie it with a three. And we'll be back in Dayton in a moment. <laughs> 21 seconds left here in Dayton. Crawford for three. Short, rebounded by the Spartan Stevens. Stevens has been outstanding in the second half. Well, well I, I thought the strategy there, with, with that much time, the 25 was actually 26 seconds. If they went for a driving score, Michigan State didn't want to foul, so at least you're going to get two out of it. Either make the layup, hit a quick score inside, but dishing off the Graves, and I'm surprised that Crawford took that shot. Because if you cut it to three, you call timeout, do what you did to get the ball. Go to your press, look for a steal or a turnover, which Michigan State has had trouble handling this press all day. Now you got a good foul shooter on the line. And that's where the three-point shot can hurt you at the end of the game. So I went right, right for the three uh, to Crawford. Crawford is, is having a little fun with Stevens at the line there. He's talking to him. Stevens calmly made the first for a six-point margin. Now they got to come down and shoot a three. And makes the second. All time. 16 seconds left. We'll be going to the conclusion of Kentucky Old Dominion from here. That's Murdoch. 10.5 seconds left. Timeout Bears. And a five-point margin again. Michigan State on top. Southwest Missouri State. Ten and a half seconds left here in Dayton. Michigan State and Southwest Missouri State at Spartans Ball. They lead by five. Stevens will inbound. Got to go for still or quick foul. Stegen goes fouled. Well, he's a 60, uh, 68 point uh, foul shooter. If he misses both, this kid played some game. What a class kid. I mean, all heart, all spirit, five foot seven, put on a show in this Dayton Arena before 14,000, took control of the whole game, and gave this people what big time college basketball is that the little man can still play. Jackie Crawford, five foot seven junior from Chicago. Standing ovation. Michigan State. 16 points on the day and the guy who ran the offense all day long and brought all of the spirit well he's the guy that got him here he's the guy that controlled this game today and it, you know they had some things going for themselves but i thought in the second half he didn't penetrate enough like he did in the first half and they went they played the perimeter game too much that's taking good got 10 points going for 11 and now, State, things right. away for State just lets the clock go right now. They don't even want to touch it. Let them go. Give them the layup. Let the ball go out of bounds. Murdoch driving. Ends up short. Mashinsky just unloads the ball down in the direction of Westford, and it's all over. The Spartans of Michigan State hold up. The Southwest Missouri State Bears who put on a real good show, a tough battle. The number 12 seeds in the Midwest against number five. The Spartans were too good in the second half. Too poised, too powerful, but certainly an entertaining contest with the Bears from Springfield, Missouri, led by their 5'7 guard, Jackie Crawford. Some outstanding inside play by Tony Graves, but you have to credit Mike Paplowski playing on two sore ankles. A good effort in the second half by Chris Wyshynski off the bench, helping it guard and forward. And Michigan State prevails. Judd Heathcote team, Judd Heathcote team advances into the second round here in Dayton.
There's the final score of the Spartans, 61, Southwest Missouri State, 54. And so they will meet the winner of game two, Cincinnati and Delaware. That's coming up here from Dayton tonight. Kansas against Howard and Evansville and Texas, El Paso. And our Chevrolet players of the game. For Southwest Missouri State, Jackie Crawford. And for Michigan State, Mike Peplowski. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports from Dayton, Ohio. More NCAA action ahead. Tim Ryan for Digger Phelps returning it out of New York. And Pat O'Brien. Tim Ryan and uh, more NCAA action right away.